Welcome back to our tower defense game development series. In the previous episodes, we explored weapon selection, coding, creating weapons in nodes, and implementing a money system. Today, we'll take our game to the next level by introducing enemy spawning and pathfinding mechanics. Let's dive in. The first thing to do is to import or create our enemies. You can download this FBX file in the link in the description. After importing it to our assets folder, we'll start by dragging it to the hierarchy, scale it, and then creating new materials for the model. Once we are happy with the result, we need to create a new prefab with our enemy by dragging it to an assets folder. Here, we can duplicate the prefab, change the name, and add new materials to it. Like this, we now have two types of enemies, and one can be stronger than the other for example. I'm going to duplicate the enemy materials folder we already have, and just change the two color materials. Now, we can drag the new enemy to make a new prefab, and delete the old one. Before we dive into the coding aspect, I'm going to create a simple environment for our enemy's path. Feel free to jump into the next part or take the time to create an environment too. In further episodes, we can work more on the level design, but for now, let's keep it simple. We'll create an empty game object for our waypoints. This waypoints will be the ones the enemies will follow, and you can add as many as you like. If you select an icon for the empty game object, you can have a better idea of where it is. Remember that the last waypoint will be the one where the enemy will reach our tower and will disappear. 
We'll add a tower and other environment assets in further episodes. Now, let's get into coding. We can create a folder for the enemy scripts and related scripts. And the first script will be one to recognize the waypoints. Inside the script, we will create a void await to get all the childs of the waypoints game object. After, we just need to apply the script to the parent of the waypoints. Now, we'll create our round manager script. This script will instantiate our enemies, and instead of adding one more enemy to the next wave, we will define how many enemies of each type we want in a wave. Inside the script, we'll start by creating a variable for each of our enemies. Then, we will create a variable for our current round. We'll use serialized field to see it in the inspector. In our void start, we will say for now, that our time is equal to 1. And now, the function that will instantiate the enemies. We will use an iEnumerator, because we want to give some time between each enemy that will be created. The first two lines here, are the ones responsible for defining how many enemies will be instantiated in each round. So, in the first round, we will have two base enemies and two strong enemies, and in the second round, five of each. After, we need to say that it will instantiate until the number of enemies is less than the enemy count. Inside, we will say that the enemies will be instantiated in the 0, 0, 0 position, and that it will wait one second to instantiate one more enemy. Finally, in our void start, we need to call the iEnumerator function. If we now get back to Unity, we just need to create a new empty game object to attach our script. Drag the enemy's prefabs to the right variables, and that's it. When we play start, we should be able to see in the hierarchy, that the enemies are being created. Right now we are only in the first round, because we don't have anything saying to go to the next one. We will just create the enemy movement, and in the next episode, we'll start by adding that code. So, we can create a new script and call it enemy movement. Inside the script, we will start by creating the variables that we need. Here, we will also add a variable for our rotation. In the start method, we will make a reference to the waypoints, and we will say that the rotation of the game object will be zero in all axis. In the update method we will say to the enemy to go in the direction of the waypoints, and then we need to say to get the next waypoint when he is close to the last one. When is Getting the next waypoint, we need to check if it's not the last waypoint, and if it is, we destroy the game object. Finally, we'll create a function that will tell the enemy to rotate in the direction of the waypoint.
Back in Unity, we need to apply the script to both enemies. And if we now play Start, everything should work correctly. Perfect. The only thing we need to change now, is the position where the enemy is being instantiated. We just need to select our first waypoint, and then copy the position to the code. This values might be different in your case, so feel free to change them. And if we now get back to Unity and play Start, it should work. The only thing left to fix is the rotation. If we go to the enemy movement code, we forgot to call the rotation function in the update method. And here, we can also delete or make this line a comment. In Unity, we need to make some changes in our enemy's prefabs. One of the problems is that the object is not facing the z-axis, so it doesn't rotate like we want. We can create an empty game object, add all the objects there, and then rotate 90 degrees. And we need to do this in both enemies. And that wraps up the third episode of our tower defense game development series. In the next episode, we'll implement the weapon's target and shooting. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment with any questions or suggestions you may have. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next episode.